All right, so as many of you know, the RX 480 actually released a few days ago, and it's a pretty awesome card. You're getting a GTX 970 to RNN 390 performance at $200 and about $240 for the four gigabyte and eight gigabyte version, respectively. But if you have also kept up with news, you would know that the RX 480 is in fact committing a few PCIe power draw violations. Now, I will link in-depth articles below if you wanna know more, but basically, the RX 480 is pulling more than the recommended 75 watts from the PCIe express lane on the motherboard. That combined with its 75 watt pull that it gets from the six pin, it is in fact overdrawing power, making the 150 watt TDP a little bit fishy. So because of this huge fiasco, a lot of people have been recommending that you do not use the RX 480 with cheaper or more budget oriented motherboards, simply because they're not suit to pull that much power from the PCIe lane. Now being the person that I am, I went into investigation mode and I decided to test this out myself. And so with me today, I have a cheaper AM3 Plus motherboard and then I have a cheaper H61 motherboard, both of which that I'm going to install all in ARCs for 80 on and test out. So using these two motherboards, I tested Unigen Heaven 4.0, I tested Overwatch, and I tested 3D Mark Firestrike. And the point of these tests was to see how much the GPU actually drew from both of these motherboards and if I had any issues while playing or running any of the benchmarks. Now the specifications of the AM3 Plus motherboard build and then the H61 motherboard build will be shown on screen. I am using a 600 watt power supply that is 80 plus certified, so it is more than enough to run both of these setups. So with the AM3 Plus motherboard running Unigen Heaven 4.0 at extreme settings, my peak draw was about 130 watts and then the average was a little bit over 100 with the peak temperature of the GPU being 83 degrees Celsius. Now on the H61 motherboard, I also tested Unigen Heaven 4.0 and it pulled a little bit more watts than the AM3 Plus motherboard, but it was again, still way under the 150 watt TDP. The peak draw was 133 watts, the average 102, and then the peak temperature on the GPU was 84 degrees Celsius. But I realized that most of you, when you game on computers, you don't play for only 20 minutes, you play for hours on end. So I ran Unigen Heaven 4.0 on these two cheap budget motherboards for about three to four hours each and these are my results. They're actually pretty identical. I had similar power draws on both ends, similar temperatures, similar average draws. They were a little bit higher, but I expected that, but it's still very safe for prolonged gameplay. On 3D Mark Firestrike with the demo, the peak draw was 142 watts, the average was 70 watts, and then the peak temperature was 82 degrees Celsius on the AM3 Plus motherboard. Now going with the H61, the peak draw was 149.3 watts, and that is the highest peak draw that I had testing any of these games and benchmarks. The average was 75.4 and then the peak temperature was 81 degrees Celsius. When it came to Overwatch, it was on epic settings, 1080p full screen. Um, I played two matches, I believe. Uh, the peak draw was 129, the average was 93, and the peak temperature was 81 degrees Celsius. On the H61 motherboard, the peak draw was 131, the average was 96, and then the peak temperature was 81 degrees Celsius also. So the verdict when it comes to cheaper budget motherboards is that the RX 480 is just fine. Now I did not test any kind of overclocking with these two motherboards just yet, but I will test that in the future, um, before and after the little release that AMD has for the driver on Tuesday. But as many of you know, Science Studio also did a video with the RX 480 and he used an AM2 motherboard and that had plenty of issues. So what I decided to do was use my LGA775 motherboard from my $25 gaming PC and see if I had similar issues as he did with his AM2 motherboard. The issues were pretty similar. I actually had a little bit more luck with Overwatch because other than the CPU bottleneck and the RAM bottleneck, it actually worked very, very well. But with any other game, it crashed. I believe it crashed at the end of 3D Mark Firestrike and around the 20th scene of Unigen Heaven 4.0. So I uninstalled the RX 480 and I plugged in the GTX 560 Ti that I used in the same video and it worked just fine. I will say if you have a motherboard that's after AM2, AM2 Plus, or LGA775, then you should be good to go with these reference model RX 480s. Now keep in mind that I am using a retail edition and I believe the sample editions were a little bit different. I'm not exactly sure how much a difference that makes, but I'm sure there is a little bit there. But as far as I'm concerned, the retail edition works perfectly fine. This was a pretty real world benchmark using this video card. So is this whole PCI Express issue with the 480 blown out of proportion? I'm not too sure honestly. It is true that it does overdraw and that can cause issues. PC Perspective proved that and a few people have shown that their motherboards have been damaged because of the ARX 480. But the whole dilemma is still a little bit wishy-washy as some people have issues and then some people don't. I will say that the majority I've seen and talked to, they don't have any issues and they're enjoying their card. So my recommendation, 
go for it. If you're looking for a card and your motherboard is less than nine years old, then definitely go and pick up one of these cards. Keep in mind that the non-reference editions are coming out pretty soon and those will have at least an eight pin PCIe connector, which will increase the stability of this card quite a bit and will give you better overclocking performance. Um, I do recommend waiting for those if you can, but if you can't wait, then just go ahead and pick up the 480. All right, so if you guys enjoyed the video or if you found it helpful, definitely share, like, subscribe, and all of that stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.